Hello there, welcome to part three of this tutorial series. In this video, we're going to use Blender to take the height maps that we created in Gaia 2 in the last two videos and use them to uh, make, a, make a 3D object where we can create nice renders uh, and also a 3D printable STL file. So I'm using Blender 4.2. If you're using a different version, then some of the interface um, yeah, some aspects of the interfa interface may be different. Um, so to start off with, uh, we're just going to get rid of the default cube by selecting and delete. Um, I'm going to assume some level of uh, Blender knowledge in this uh, video. It, this shouldn't be a introduction to Blender. At the very least, if you are new to Blender, you should be able to just follow along. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is add a plane. So we can go up to add, mesh and plane. Going to scale that by 10, so S and 10. And then we're going to subdivide this. So we're going to uh, first of all hit tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide, go down to the subdivide menu here and increase this to 100 cuts. Um, and then edit again to go back into object mode. And now we need to add a couple of modifiers from this modifiers tab. So the first modifier we're going to add is a um, subdivision surface. So this is going to just add even more um, points for the height map to displace, um, but without actually affecting the underlying geometry. On my system, I can handle uh, five for the level, uh, for the viewport and six for the uh, final render. Um, but if you find your computer struggling or crashing, uh, make sure to um, reduce these. Um, and I like too simple here because um, the other one rounds off the corners of the map. Okay, next up is to add the displace modifier. So add a new modifier, deform, and then displace. And we're going to add a new texture. And then uh, go down to the texture tab. And now we go to where your builds are from Gaia. And we're going to use this. Um, well, for me, it's trees underscore out dot EXR. If you rename to the trees node, then it will be something different. Um, now this was our final height map. Um, by default, this mid level set to 0.5 and this puts it below the ground. Um, so we'll just change this to zero. Um, and this will update. And if you want to increase or decrease the height of the map now, you can also do this with this strength value, but I'm going to leave it at one. Um, so yeah, so we have this um, white but 3D version of our map so far. So now I'm going to just drag this up to make some more space. Click this and change it to the shader editor. And then with the plane selected, click new to add a new material. Um, I recommend installing the Node Wrangler add-on, uh, which you can do by going to edit and then preferences. And then it's in there in the add-on section. And if you've done that, you can hit Control T, and this will open up uh, the nodes we need now to add the color. Um, so again, open Gaia, and this time we want uh, the color image. So uh, I must have forgotten to rename this to Texture Out or something, but this will be whatever you've renamed that node to in Gaia. Um, and right now we won't be able to see any color because we need to go into viewport shading by clicking this. And so now we can see that we've got the sort of the 3D and we've got the colors, uh, but it's all looking a bit strange right now because uh, everything's a bit too shiny. But we're going to fix that because we want the water to be shiny, but we don't want the land to be shiny. So in order to do that, we're going to uh, select these three nodes, do shift D to duplicate them and just move them down here. 
um, and then click open. And this time around, we want the water mask. Um, and you can see here that we've got kind of white for where the water is and black for the land. Um, we need to invert this because we're plugging this into the roughness node and we want the, the land to be rough. Um, so we change this to invert color and then drag from the color into the roughness. And when this updates, what we can see is the, uh, the land is not so shiny anymore, but we can even see kind of like little glints of light from the, the rivers, which is nice. Okay, um, now that's done. Uh, the next step is to improve the lighting of this scene. So right now we're just being illuminated by this lamp, which I'm gonna get rid of now. And there's two options uh, for lighting. One, we can use an HDRI. So to use an HDRI, we go to the uh, World tab where it says color, we'll change this to an environment texture. And then we can open our HDRI and you can Google these. There's, in fact, I think pretty much all of these are freely available ones. Um, but these are essentially just high dynamic range, 360 degree images so that when you load them, uh, they can be used to light your scene. And you can see here, for example, uh, perhaps we wouldn't want this in our render, but uh, we can see the reflections of the trees in our in our water. Um, so this is quite good, particularly if you're using Eevee to um, do your render, um, because Eevee does not fully support the other option. If we go back to the color, we can then go to sky texture. Um, you can see here, sun disk not available. So it's not going to have a, a kind of like a sun light in the, uh, in the object. It just gives you this sort of sky glow. Um, so at this point I will change over to cycles as uh, so we go here to the render settings, change to cycles, change it to GPU compute. Um, and this gives um, more realistic results than EV, but at the expense of higher computational um, cost. Um, right now, this is a bit overexposed, so uh, we can turn the, sort of the strength of the, the light down a bit, not too much. Um, you'll notice the colors aren't exactly the same as they were in Gaia. Um, this is because uh, the the lighting of the scene does have a big effect on the on the colors. Um, some controls that we we have here. Um, so there's you know, we can set the uh, the, the alt altitude. Um, we can change kind of the sort of air density, dust, ozone. Um, kind of play around with these to until you get kind of a result that that you like. Um, oh, and of course, the actual position of the sun in the sky does have a big effect on the lighting as well. So perhaps we will kind of move this around and kind of create a kind of sort of sunrise lighting. Um, and in fact, if this then starts getting too dark, maybe we'll just turn this up a little bit as well. Um, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube discussing good lighting. I am absolutely not an expert in lighting, um, but, uh, you can't go wrong with some golden hour lighting, I guess. Um, so the next thing, uh, we'll want to do is set up our camera. So if you're, if you are new to Blender, this can be, uh, bit of a, a pitfall where you're, you're thinking that you're always looking through the camera while you're, you're in this view. But, uh, what we actually need to do is, um, look through an actual camera object. Um, so we can, I, in fact, I'm going to add a second camera to the scene. So add camera and this one, um, if I just change this to, view layer. 
There we go, is our new camera. Um, and we can either we can go to the object tab here um, and change its location. So perhaps we'll set this to 15 meters to make it a bit higher. And then if I drag across all three of these at the same time and set them to zero, it will be pointing uh, down at the map. Um, to see the uh, camera view, we can click this symbol here. Now you can see we're, we're looking uh, down at the map, but we need to zoom out a little bit. Um, by default, uh, the camera doesn't move with your mouse movements, but if we click this uh, padlock here, it will move out with us. Um, we also want to sort of change the shape of our render. So we do this by going to the output settings and then changing the X and Y resolution to what you want. So right now it's set to 1080p, uh, but we're going to go for a square resolution. Um, I'm going to go for quite high. Uh, let's do 1496. Once you have this all set up and ready to go, uh, now's time to render. I'll just get this started and then I'll be back with the final result. Okay, and here we have the final render. Um, probably could have spent a bit more time getting the, the lighting just right, but I think um, you'll have plenty more time to perfect these aspects for, for your own render. Um, one thing I noticed looking at this top-down view is although the landscape we produced was quite exaggerated, uh, from from this perspective, it creates a, an interesting look and texture without looking too unrealistic. So, I think this can work quite well um, as a you know using this this top down view. Um, obviously, you can also create um, nice dramatic shots, kind of a lower angle. Um, just play around with it once you've got it created. One thing I wanted to also do was take a look at a sort of side by side comparison with the results that you can achieve using the free version of Gaia if you haven't bought a license. Um, so I'm just going to switch over to the 1K view. And you can see that this is uh, still a fairly attractive map. Um, the, the look is a little bit different. There's kind of the, the down cutting um, is, is a bit different. Um, and one major difference is with the trees. So I'm actually displaying here a, a version without the trees being displayed. Um, but if I go back to with the trees, you can see that they have a much more sort of dramatic effect on the light map. And this is just because the pixels I imagine in the, the height map image are larger. Um, and uh, therefore the, the trees that they're representing become become bigger as well. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll show some kind of close-up shots of uh, both the 1K and 8K version. Um, if you're not happy with the 1K version and you want to reach out to me for a commission, um, I've got a, an Etsy store linked below. And um, based on how much of the work that you've done yourself, if you've kind of followed uh, the... the basic landmass creation tutorial or, or even further, um, I'm, I will happily sort of adjust the, the prices of the commission based on that. I think I'll leave the uh, video there for today. Um, I think I'll add the section around 3D printing because it's quite a, probably quite a different audience. Um, I'll keep that as a separate video. Um, but if you've been enjoying the tutorial so far, please um, leave a like, uh, leave me a comment. I read and reply to all the comments. It, it really helps motivate me to carry on doing this because otherwise you feel like you're sending a video out into the void. Um, so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.